what is the best animated movie, and why. Grave of the Fireflies. Never would have thought that an animated movie could make me cry like a little bee. This is the kind of movie you watch once. I was expecting it to be like Spirited Away. Spoiler alert it was not. And I sobbed for like a half hour afterward. What a punch in the gut. An important story to tell. But a guy don't even want to think about it. I've watched this like 7 times. 15 minutes and I'm already sobbing. Because I know what happens. 7 times over the span of 20 plus years. Not consecutively. When you need a good cry. This is a good one to watch. The Secret of NIMH, stunning visuals, amazing score, great voice acting, and a story that's a lot more interesting than the book it's based on. Pretty much any of Don Bluth's early movies really. All Dogs Go to Heaven was always my favorite, just because how batch crazy it was. Don Bluth's animation was awesome, loved pretty much all he had done. Secret of NIMH, All Dogs Go to Heaven, Thumbalina, Anastasia, Pebble and the Penguin. It's a shame his studio didn't take off. Not sure if anyone said this, but the last Unicorn. Everything from the animation to the characters is stellar. And I don't think I've ever watched an animated movie that's made me feel the same way as the last Unicorn does. This was the one I wore out as a kid, and still occasionally watch today. It's remarkable how certain scenes hit me so much differently as an adult. Molly grew. Man. And where were you 20 years ago? 10 years ago? Where were you? When I was new. When I was one of those innocent young maidens you always come to, how dare you, how dare you come to me now, when I'm this, this, sh got real in that movie, like in the musical Oliver, and that poor sweet wench gets it, our childhood movies were no joke, the wine drinking skeleton scared the damn shit of me as a kid, so I didn't actually watch this one, until I was in my twenties, f that skeleton, your name is a golden bell hung in my heart, I would break my body to pieces, to call you once by your name. There are no happy endings, because nothing ends. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind for me. The intricacy of Miyazaki's worlds is always fascinating, and I just love Nausicaa herself so much, as well as the tightly constructed plot. The Majesty of the Omu. Such a great movie. If you wanna be blown away even further, read the manga. Nausicaa the movie only covers about one quarter of the full plot. The complete story of Nausicaa is one of the most fascinating stories I can remember reading. It at times was uncompromisingly sad. A world teeming with life and death where holy men and warlord walk side by side into doom and magic and incomprehensible mystic. I honestly cannot remember many happy moments in it. But I can always remember Nausicaa who has a composure about her throughout the story. That is so. Seemingly enlightened. I don't think it even once made me feel happy. But I still somehow felt so full of hope reading it. Watching the end of a world in the one girl there to make it just a bit more gentle to its inhabitants. It is the true culmination of Miyazaki's focus on the themes of our railing planet's environment. Just thinking about it makes me have to read it again. It was beautiful and melancholy, and unfounding and enlightening, and the movie capture, but a fraction of the true scope of this work of art. Love that you went with this one. Nausicaa is my favorite Miyazaki film. Meet the Robinsons. Disney movie. I fell in love with it as a child. I have been ridiculously depressed lately, and I was going to watch something else on Netflix, but saw they had it on here and immediately started crying, so I put it on. Cried throughout the entire thing, just before I was about to quit on myself entirely. That movie told me to keep moving forward. You learn from mistakes, successes, and not so much, was a great reminder and definitely a favorite. Such a great 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 movie, especially for children who were adopted. It can be hard to cope with being adopted, whether your birth parents are dead or alive. But this movie showed a mother giving up her son for adoption, and he becomes okay with that. He doesn't have to search the past for his family, and you don't have to be related by blood to be family. It's all about the people who love you. This movie came out a while after I finally accepted my situation and what had happened to my mom. But still it was great to see and I cry every time I watch it. Cue Rob Thomas Little Wonders in the Waterworks. I have a few. Your name is a fantastic piece of art visually breathtaking. Song of the Sea is another gorgeous animated piece. Purely magical story rooted in Irish mythology. The art style is a little different and beautiful. And the sound design is also fantastic. 
The Breadwinner is another example of beautiful storytelling filled with empathic characters and realism. Telling a difficult story through the eyes of a child. All three of these are kind of mood movies for me. For when I want to feel extra emotional, Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea, and The Breadwinner are amazing movies that needs more attention from people. Kells and Song are some brilliant showcases of Irish mythology, too, which I'm intensely interested in. It's a damn shame the Celtic mythologies don't get as much airtime. I can't believe I had to scroll so far before I could see your name. Makoto Shinkei's works in general are stunning in terms of aesthetic. Even some of his earlier works like Garden of Words made me question if I was watching an animation at times. Loving Vincent is the first, and to my knowledge only, full-length film, where every frame is an oil painting. It's about a guy who goes to the town in southern France, where Vincent van Gogh was living, and tries to figure out how he died. Amazing movie all around. I'm pretty sure that counts as animation. Saw this in the theater, and sat in my usual spot, about halfway from the screen. Once it started, I realized I was too far away, and moved to the front row. Wow. It's the only film I will ever recommend sitting right up close. The detail is just so beautiful. Same can be said for actual Van Gogh paintings. Pictures just don't do them justice. You have to see them up close. And in person. The man was brilliant. Definitely The Road to El Dorado. Visually beautiful. Music by Elton John. Funny. I could rewatch that movie so many times. Tulio. Did you ever think it would come to this? The horse is a surprise. I think this and The Emperor's New Groove shaped my humor more than any other animated movies. The Emperor's New Groove is the sh- This was the first movie I owned on DVD. My brother and I can quote it to death. I feel it is so underrated and is not mentioned enough. Just you posting this put a smile on my face. Thanks. I'd say the original Ghost in the Shell. Storytelling. Incredibly artistic hand-drawn scenes. Music that I can recall to this day. It was pretty groundbreaking artistically and ideologically for 1995. Definitely my favorite one. Artistic. Philosophical. Well planned. Lots of obvious and hidden meaning in every frame and every sequence in smart storytelling. And a great story overall. The Land Before Time. It was the fifth time that a movie made me feel so many emotions that I couldn't place at my young age and watching Littlefoot cope with his mother's death was devastating I watched it last year when it was on Netflix still cried a hey, thank you to whoever for the gold when you see other people write this exact sentence it's like okay point whatever but it is actually pretty cool thank you to whoever at 37 years old I'm still emotionally air fed up from this movie and the brave little toaster. That scene with little foot thinking his shadow is his mommy's. So freaking heart wrenching. I'm going to go out on a limb and say triplets of Belleville. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor and go watch it. My mom was obsessed with this movie when I was a kid, five or six, and something about the art style and the lack of dialogue scared the absolute shit out of me. I can appreciate it now, but watching it still makes me a little uneasy. The Great Mouse Detective is pretty effing clever. Apparently I watched this movie so much as a child that the rest of my family absolutely hates it. Whoops. Oh Rattigan. Mary and Maximum it's a bit depressing, but the ending is beautiful. I cried so that says Alert. Mask of the Phantasm because Batman was checking to make sure someone mentioned this. Toy Story. I think Toy Story is so ingrained into society and is so respected as the first computer animated full length movie that people forget how good the writing, voice acting, creativity, and story are on their own. Thank you, in my opinion. Toy Story 1, 2, 3 is on par with the greatest trilogies of all time. Toy Story 3 got the lowest score out of the other two movies, as it got 99% on Rotten Tomatoes. Treasure Planet. This movie is awesome. One of the best films Musker slash Clemens ever directed. Such a shame that it flopped. The sad part is, is I like I think they had been begging to make that movie forever, and their boss was like, you can make it. But do this one first, rinse and repeat, that a few times and finally they got to make their passion project, and then it flopped. I think some argue it was because of marketing, but I'm not sure if that's true or not. It being one of my fave animated movies myself, I can't really tell why it didn't take off. 
because I sure fell in love with it. I'll see if I can find the source that explains all this. It was a fascinating video, and I'd love to share it. Anastasia, 1997. The music provides a nice touch. Have you heard? There's a rumor in Street Petersburg. One upon a December gets stuck in my head for days, and I don't really mind. That says a lot. No hotter animated character than Dimitri. A silent voice from Kyoto Animations. The way they show what it means to have friends, and how Dark Shoya touched me in a way no movie ever had. Isn't Kyoto Animations a studio that was burnt down by an arson? Yes, and murdered employees. I was looking for this. A Silent Voice is by far my favorite movie of all time. It's a redemption story done right. A beautiful portrayal of what the world is really like. Fantasia, 1940. The most creative, most beautiful animation to ever be drawn by Walt Disney Animation Studios. All of it paired up with classical music. It's a feast for the eyes and ears. Fantastic Mr. Fox. I effing love the animation style and humor in this movie. It also stays true to the book story while putting a fresh spin on it. I worked on FMF and it was equal parts an amazing and frustrating experience. We definitely didn't think we had something that had the chance to be this loved on our hands until the cast and crew screenings. Suddenly it all fell into place and we could see this quirky, heartfelt gem that had taken shape. Some of things that felt like insane choices in the original script especially the wolf scene and cussing made sense and have been the bits that have stuck with people. When you work with different directors you get to see their styles up close. Wes isn't just in every frame of that film he's in every pixel. There are so many minor details that you will probably never pick up on that go into making the film his. For example the jam jar in the fox's kitchen. 50 plus redescents to get it signed off. Mr. Fox's study. A scale replica of Roald Dahl's writing room down to the tiny screwed up ball of Kit Kat silver appers. To me the most magical moment of the whole thing was being in the unit we were shooting the sea idea cellar in. As the dop was lighting it the space went from a dingy room in East London to this almost cathedral like space. It was breathtaking. The closest thing I've ever experienced to that moment again is walking into the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and seeing the light inside. To this day it still blows my mind that I got to be a part of something that has resonated with people so deeply. My bottle of beans C idea still sits in pride of place in my drinks cabinet. Bogus. Bunsen bean. One fat. One short. One lean. These horrible crooks. So different in looks. Were nonetheless equally mean. Are you cussing me? I had to scroll this far down to find this. The cuss you are. The cuss am I. My all time favorite animated movie is Laputa. Castle in the Sky by Studio Ghibli. The characters. The world building. The plot. The animation. And the score are all phenomenal. Since having kids we steadily rotate through that one along with Nausicaa. Howl's Moving Castle. My Neighbor Totoro. And Spirited Away. Eater. Ponyo is definitely part of that rotation too. Mananoke is a bit too mature for my little kids, but I've seen it many times, including in theater, when it was originally released. All of them are amazing for those same reasons. I never get tired of them. Seen them hundreds of times each by now. The music and scenery are amazing. Also my favorite aspect is how they all feature strong capable female lead characters. Pixar barely ever does that. No one mentions Princess Mananoke. That was a pretty big deal. Too heavy for young kids I guess. Also my favorite aspect is how they all feature strong capable female lead characters. Pixar barely ever does that. Hardly anyone does that. Usually when media has a strong female character, she has to go out of her way to prove she's strong. Or just as good as the boys or whatever. But a real strong female lead doesn't need to prove anything. She just is. Wolf children. Has no one said Kubo and the Two Strings yet? Beautiful stop motion film from Laker. Who created Coraline, Paranorman, etc. Not even addressing the brilliant story, themes and music in Kubo. The animation alone is just incredible. The skeleton model was 16 feet tall. And they created new techniques for things that had never been put to stop motion before. Such as huge rolling waves in the ocean. Done with cloth over a rig I Ike. Some of the faces were 3D printed even. It's honestly one of the most elegantly told stories I've ever seen put to screen. And it's combined with the best stop motion animation I've ever seen. 
It's incredible. Please. Next time Laker produces a film. Go see it. They are independent and each one of their films has brought in less and less despite the quality going up and up. Cubo only barely brought in 78 mil against a 60 mil budget. Their most recent film, Missing Link, didn't even make back a quarter of its budget. Stop motion as a medium is really rare already, and to have it be done so well is utterly unheard of. I would hate to see Laker go down like this. Laker is my magic for the 2010s. Coraline to Paranormal. Cubo and their latest film, which I remember constantly searching up for news on it for any clues as to what it is, and Regina Spector's version of While My Guitar Gently Weeps is brilliant. Monsters Incorporated. Put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. She's out of our hobby eye. Using mainly spoons we will dig a tunnel under the city, and release her into the wild. Spirited Away, a coming of age tale that revolves around personal ownership of actions, difficult choices, sacrifice and growth, a must see for anyone ages 9 and higher. I would say, that there is no best as a lot of entries on this list, a must see, anything goodly really, but you should screen some of it, if you're going to show it to children. My Neighbor Totoro is a great watch for children of any age, but I wouldn't recommend Princess Mononoke to anyone younger than 12. Also Patima Inverted is a great watch for anyone older than 11 plus. I have many, many more to recommend, but those three are a good list, for now. I agree with your choices, but think you're being rather conservative with the ages there. Children much younger than 12 or 7 can get a lot out of Spirited Away and Totoro. The latter in particular seems to enthrall young children like nothing else. Princess Mononoke Anyone. The theme plus Journey to the West are two of the most beautiful animosts. How has nobody said the road to El Dorado yet? That movie ticked every box. Stars. Can't do it. Not today. Guys you're broke. You got nothing to bet with. You fight like my sister. To Zimbabwe. Apparently. El Dorado is native for great point big point rock. Rock rock rock. It's a horse. It doesn't know what a pry bar is. Clink. Well. It's not a pry bar. Where are we? We are stuck in a barrel. That is the extent of my knowledge. I named my cats Migul and Tulio. Migul and Tulio. Mighty and powerful cats. Please tell me it's an orange tabby and a tuxedo. The road to El Dorado is what happens when two bards decide that they want to go on an adventure. The DM just sighs and goes. Okay. Well point effort. Let's see what happens. Rolls nat 20 and your singing convinces the tribe's people that you're gods. A goofy movie. Hi dad soup. The Lion King. 1994. It has everything. Comedy. Horror. Drama. Action. It holds up so well, and is way better than the remake. Not to mention the soundtrack is Amazeballs, and is way better than the remake. That's basically a given with all of these Disney remakes. At best they are mediocre, and not as good as the original. At worst they are abysmal cash grabs. The Incredibles. It's weirdly one of the more mature superhero movies out there. The way it deals with handling a midlife crisis shows that, just because something is animated, doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a kid's movie. My absolute favorite Pixar movie, while watching it as a grown up, I was surprised how mature some of the dialogue and scenes are. It just might be the Pixar movie with the highest on screen body count. Bob threatened to snap Syndrome's secretary's neck because he thought Syndrome had killed his entire family and he just wanted to hurt him somehow. And Syndrome told him to go ahead and do it. Rated PG. It might be the best action movie I've ever seen. Certainly the best superhero movie. Honey, where's my super suit? The first Incredibles is one of the few movies I give a 10 tenths. There is absolutely nothing about the movie it'd change. The plot, voice cast, score, humor, action sequences, and animation are all just perfect. Easily the best superhero movie ever made. I usually hate when they cast regular actors for voice work because they suck at it. They just use their own voice. Nothing fun or fancy just easy paycheck and move on. But this movie everyone is perfect. Jason Lee gives the best over the top super villain monologue ever. You married Ellis to Jerrell, and got busy. Ratatouille. Fight me. Can't believe I had to scroll so much for this. The sound of the bread crackling. And Ego's review of Gusto's get to me every damn time. Here is a clip of the review. And it's transcript. In many ways. The work of a critic is easy. We risk very little. 
yet enjoy a position over those who offer up their work and their selves to our judgment. We thrive on negative criticism, which is fun to write and to read, but the bitter truth we critics must face is that, in the grand scheme of things, the average piece of junk is more meaningful than our criticism designating it so. But there are times when a critic truly risks something, and that is in the discovery and defense of the new. Last night, I experienced something new, an extraordinary meal from a singularly unexpected source. To say that both the meal and its maker have challenged my preconceptions is a gross understatement. They have rocked me to my core. In the past, I have made no secret of my disdain for Chef Gusto's famous motto, anyone can cook, but I realize that only now do I truly understand what he meant. Not everyone can become a great artist, but a great artist can come from anywhere. It is difficult to imagine more humble origins than those of the genius now cooking at Gusto's, who is, in this critic's opinion, nothing less than the finest chef in France. I will be returning to Gusto's soon, hungry for more. One of the best scenes in cinematic history, doubly so because it's done by Peter O'Toole who has been nominated for best actor like 8 times, but never won. I find his character statement to be a very personal F you to the critics. It's such a great essay on criticism. The premise of the movie is so goofy, but I cry every time I see that scene with Ego's flashback. That visceral sense of nostalgia is so simple and beautiful. Gap, I'm already crying. P, the transition in and out of that flashback is one of the absolute best scene changes I've seen in any movie. It's an absolute perfect use of a dolly zoom. Establishes the fact that the scene is a flashback without the typical use of a white fade and matches the eyes of adult ego with child ego to help ensure the audience knows that they are the same person. And it's visually beautiful. I'm astounded every time I watch it. Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron, Matt Damon is spirit, portrayal of beautiful friendship, respectful of Native American culture, lots of horses, so cute, such love. Paprika. Some clever editing technique outlined in this wonderful video essay. Meet the Robinsons. It's hard to find people that like this movie, but it's one of my favorites and I think it's severely underrated. Your Name was a deeply emotionally manipulative film in the best possible way. Lilo and Stitch, because I said so. Yeah Lilo and Stitch is definitely one of my favorites, not only because of the story or the humor, but also because it depicts Lilo and Nana's relationship after their parents' death in such a realistic way without being blunt or making fun of troubled kids. Lilo struggles with loss in a way I have never seen in another kid's movie. She isn't overtly sad or dramatic, if anything she is just so, so angry and confused. She has a clear sense of Suviva's guilt, she wants to be taken away by Cobra, so she won't bother Nanny anymore, and has formed a very morbid and apathic, nearly nihilistic attitude towards life in general that is, while a little caricaturized, still a realistic depiction of how many kids deal with loss. The no, no, just no, just gets me every time, because it's such a good portrayal of how lost and confused she feels, and the best is, her feelings are never the, but of the joke. Every adult character in the story tries to be understanding but nobody knows how to handle her. She has trouble connecting to kids her age and they are the only ones we see as being cruel to her, because they too struggle to understand how Lilo feels and act so they choose to avoid her. But it never depicts Lilo's anger as anything but valid. And this is such an important message. I just love, love, love how every human character in this movie is just as flawed and overwhelmed as Lilo. But they all try to deal with it in their own way. This is my family. I found it all on my own. It's little and broken, but still good. Yeah, still good. Oh good. My dog found the chainsaw. Cracks me up every time. I feel like other movies in this post might have better stories and visuals and the like. But Lilo and Stitch is probably the most fun. I watch that sh every time it gets brought up. I think I'll watch it this week. Now that I think about it. Coraline. The beautiful stop motion animation amazed me when I first watched it plus the eerie story and effects of the movie makes it my favorite movie of all time to be honest. This movie scared the shit out of me. As an adult, no animated movie has ever disturbed me as much as this one. Though, yes, the animation is beautiful. What I find fascinating about it is how creepy slash scary it is to adults, but not to kids. My son really loves it and it creeps me out.